welcome everybody and be ready to be inspired by yet another episode of star tales honor to be moderating this session with one of my favorite individuals in the tech industry a great human and a serial entrepreneur who has built startups grounds up based on her idea um we have netspeed which is now part of intel and we also have prism circuit which is now part of moses this is none other than sundari mitra the corporate vp and gm of ip engineering group intel corp welcome sundari thank you so thank you so much anil thank you so much rama and you know it's humbling for me to hear this warm introduction from someone i admire deeply so uh it's uh, it's nice to be here and i look forward to this conversation awesome thank you so much ma'am thank you so much one question i have sundari you started your career as a design engineer at intel and now you are back in as part of the executive management team and that is a fabulous journey that i see how would you visualize yours from your perspective Yeah so uh it's been i mean uh, when intel acquired netspeed systems uh, i actually stood up on a stage and i said this is like home coming for me uh, i consider intel sort of my alma mater the initial do's and don'ts of uh, you know being in a business environment i captured from intel um the the few things i learned very early on in my career was focus how important it is for us to focus on one thing and ensure that execution is done to the best of our abilities um so i wanted to kind of ask curious saying i saw that as an engineer who had just graduated from college will i see that relentless focus at the executive levels of intel as well and um it's a fascinating journey it's fascinating for me to sit here and see how this machine called intel actually churns and brings out one good product after the other um and a lot of times i actually compare my journey today with an intel to being um running a country like india we don't know how it happens but man the country rocks right we keep moving forward we keep taking additional strides i'm sort of in that uh, conundrum at intel right now trying to learn trying to understand uh how does it work uh imbibe scale learn how to operate things at scale and it's just a daily learning journey for me nice thank you okay um every conversation that i've had with you in the past and in the present is highly technical i see you as a hardcore technical person and uh, with this technical ability you are solving uh challenges challenges with the solutioning and that's the good part but there is another facet to it which is really the business angle now how do you balance the business angle and the technicalities and convince the investors in a chip industry where the results are long pole i mean that that is quite quite a challenge <laughs> uh, no, absolutely uh, you know there has to be an element of craziness in someone who aspires to do chip startups uh, and i think that is there in me in droves uh the the interesting thing is the first startup that i did i did not raise any capital i actually bootstrapped it and that's an interesting journey as well i was at sun microsystems and um you know sun kind of rose and then it was setting and during the setting period of the sun one day my boss calls me up and says you know we are canceling your program and you have a choice you can stay but we are laying off your entire team and i'm like no 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 i think you're kidding with me right if you're laying my team off you got to lay me off with that the reason you're not laying me off is because i will get a huge package because for 12 years i've been at sun and he said no that's not the case i said then lay me off so i took a lay off package from sun and i went to my husband and i said you know this is money we were not expecting i said i don't know what i'm going to do with it but let's hang on to it and that money is what i invested in starting my first startup was my lay off package from sun microsystems and um and then that journey was it was a bootstrap company i really had no experience with business i am a technologist at heart i chose a field to start my first company which was my comfort zone on technology i knew no one could challenge me on technology but i knew there would be many challenges on the business side because it was the first time for me to do a business but i also knew that i have a phenomenal partner at home uh, this is my husband samir 
who would coach me through the business sides if I needed that help. Of course, like any, any wife, I don't always listen to my husband. But in this case, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to put him in the bucket of someone who's advising me on my company, not necessarily as someone who's my partner. And that after some struggles, I think we got to a good place. Um, so I ran Prism Circuits knowing the technology very well. And the best part was that when I showed up at a customer, first, they saw that I was female, I was Indian. They didn't think I was the CEO, uh, especially in a lot of the Asian countries. Um, they would ask me, are you the admin of Sundari San? I'm like, no, 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 I'm the admin and I'm Sundari San, right? So this was Japan. Um, then we would start a conversation and they're like, okay, uh, you know, can you talk about uh, this why is your company charging this much money for this product? And I'd say, is it okay for me to go on a whiteboard? And I would just draw out the high level architecture of the Surdis that we had designed. And I was like, you tell me, is this complex or not? So I could cover the whole gamut of technology, business, legal. Uh, and uh, and it, it was just fascinating for them to meet a person who could actually transcend all those boundaries by myself. Right, so that was my first experience. Uh, and in two and a half years, uh, because I was doing everything in the company, I had no board, I had no investors, I was exhausted. So when I got opportunities to exit the company, I actually did, right? So that was my first company. The second company, because I had the success of the first one where I did this crazy thing, investors wanted to see what I could do if I took money from them. So in Prism Circuits, it's curious. After my second year, invested wanted to invest in me, but I didn't need the money because I had enough in the bank. So uh, it was a totally different um, journey because it was bootstrapped and, um, you know, in retrospect, a phenomenal success. Uh, when it came to NetSpeed, uh, like I said, initial euphoria of the investors, okay, here she comes, we want to invest in her, was good. But when I had to go back for the you know, follow-up rounds, um, you know, round B, round C, it was not easy. But you got to go with data. You got to do with, go with customer data. You got to go with technology data. You got to tell them who your team is. But finally, you got to show them your passion and you got to show them your execution, finesse, and focus. And uh, that's the way it worked for me. Uh, is being transparent, being honest, and you know, with integrity, tell them these are my problems, but this is how I'm going to overcome them. What an inspiring story, ma'am! What is really, <laughs> really inspiring, really inspiring. So, Samir, Samir sir was our first advisor, ma'am. He's one of the reasons why we are a technology company today. Nice, very nice. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm sure a lot of youngsters out there who inspire to become entrepreneurs and leaders aspiring to build, scale, and grow. What would be your message to them, ma'am? Um, my, my message to, uh, actually my message to everyone is, you should be an entrepreneur no matter in which capacity. So if you ever want to start your own company and become an entrepreneur, even if you're in a larger corporation right now, treat your project as an entrepreneurial venture. Treat it as if your life depends on it. Treat it as if that's the one that's going to take you to the next step in your journey. And, and if you go with that passion at everything that you do, it gives you so much joy that you want to keep doing it again and again, right? So uh, you have to treat it as your pet project and believe that you know, if you do well in it, no matter whether it's in a larger company or your own, then, you know, you give it the full emotional, mental, physical energy, and it's going to be successful. Um, nothing comes without hard work. It, it's not as if I walk on water. I'm a very, very ordinary person. I will not even say that I stood first in my grades or class or college. I'm not a gold medalist. I'm none of those. I was a very hardworking, very diligent person who wanted to understand what I was learning. Going back to basics, right? So, I mean, um, I told you I'm a mixed signal analog kind of person. 
uh, very, very grounded in electrons. I mean, so when I, someone puts a circuit in front of me, I can see the current flowing in it, right? So it's kind of, that's the kind of person that I am. And that attention to detail, um, the, the desire to, no matter what I take up, do it to the best of my abilities. And then after that, you know, uh, the results will follow. And that's how I continuously inspire myself as challenging myself against my own goals, right? So today, for example, I mean, uh, at Intel, do I work hard? My days start at 6.30 in the morning. That's how my meetings are. And my last meeting ends at about 7.30 in the evening every single day, right? I'm not young, but the, I enjoy it gives me joy to create things, to see other people succeeding around me, giving opportunities to other people. And, and, um, and maybe I'm a boring person in the eyes of a lot of people because I don't do TV, I don't do things like that, but, <laughs> but I enjoy this, so I, I spend my time doing it. Awesome, thank you so much. So years back, when NetSpeed engaged a lollipop, I could see that each and every uh, team member at NetSpeed was design driven. So what's the secret, ma'am? How did NetSpeed take a design first approach? And everything at NetSpeed is so uh, design centric. So what's your uh, take on that, ma'am? Yeah, so um, in the, at the end of the day, Anil, the, the, whatever product we build has to be appealing to someone, okay? So uh, the NetSpeed product actually had a GUI, it had a software interface which had to work really well for a, a user to embrace it. And then we had to relay that story via our, you know, company web pages, uh, via, you know, some material collateral that we could create saying, hey, this is the best tool for people to use to do chip design. And it was very algorithmic. It was a very, very deeply technical issue that we have solved, but we wanted to make it appear simple. If you make things appear complicated to people, the general um, you know, uh, feeling is saying, oh my God, this is so difficult. It's so complex. Why do we go there? What Lollipop helped us in right, is to simplify that and give a message to everyone saying, this is it. You get your hands on this. It's very simple to use, but it solves the most complicated problems. Right. And to me, that that is that is in a sense is design. Awesome. Thank and you, so and much, you guys are fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, you, you spoke about the multi skill. So when you started, uh, you went into technology and uh, you understood about the legal side of it and the finance. How does one acquire this kind of a skill? Like I, when I started Lollipop, I was just a designer. For a long time, I was just a designer. Just recently, Rama was making fun that you speak about numbers and Anil, leave the, Anil will leave the room. So, which is very true. <laughs> I still do not understand numbers. It's like, I want to learn about numbers, but every time I like make an attempt, it's, 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 it's sometimes it feels like it's not my cup of tea, but also I feel bad about it that I don't uh, understand numbers. Like what's your secret, ma'am, to be, Multi-skilled. I wouldn't say I'm multi-skilled. I'm pathetic with numbers also, Anil. <laughs> so if, uh, running, running the, I always need a good CFO, okay with me? <laughs> so uh, that's a given. But, but I will tell you that um, since early on, I, um, I have some other interesting things that I may probably weave into this. So I had this, um, when I had my first child, um, I used to be at Intel and Sachin, my son, our son was born. And I went to my boss after the maternity leave ended saying, you know what? I'm enjoying my baby too much. I want to work part-time for some more time. And my boss said, no, you cannot do that. And um, so I asked him to give me a piece of paper. And he said, what do you want a piece of paper for? I took the paper from him and I wrote, I resign. I literally resigned and walked out of Intel because they did not allow me to work part-time after I had a kid, okay? So you can see that I have this crazy streak in me where to me, my life is mine. I want to do things that give me joy. If at that point in time, what was giving me joy was being with my baby who I, I knew I was not gonna have 10 of them. So I knew I was just gonna have a few opportunities to enjoy that part of my life. 
Uh, and uh, right, so I just made that decision. That's sort of who I am. So that curiosity and the desire to want to do what gives me joy makes me read a lot. So early on, when I was doing technical work, um, at a given point in time, I mean, now I, I think it doesn't happen. I don't have the energy, perhaps. I would read two or three different books in parallel, some related to philosophy, some related to business, some related to technology. So I'd be consuming IEEE journals where I'm kind of keeping abreast of what's going on on my technical side, but I would always have like a Harvard Business Review article or something else that I was also reading. Okay. The other thing I have done very effectively in my life is to have mentors. Even today I have mentors. Even inside Intel, I seek out mentors saying, teach me about scale. As a CEO of a company, I had four or five different mentors and I would reach out to them just to learn. So I, you can either learn by reading, by you know, uh, getting the, you know, the best pointers in terms of what you can read, but more importantly, learning from other people's experiences in terms of what they have done, sharing, first of all, what you want to learn. Right? So you have to have the humility to say, I don't know this. You have the humility of saying, I don't know numbers. Right? With that humility, if you then say, look, I really want to conquer this, I'm going to make a sincere attempt, you will probably ask Renel, saying, give me a mentoring session so next time you don't walk out of the room. Renel, I'm stuffing you with some work over here, but anyway. <laughs> right? That, that's what you got to do is you got to figure out how to overcome it. You just kind of, um, and, and, and that's what I do even today. And asking questions and admitting that you don't know something to me is not a mark of weakness. It's a, it's a mark of confidence. You're confident in your ability saying, I don't need to be an expert in everything, right? I can be an expert in two things, but the 10 other things that are required for me to be a successful business person I'm going to either learn it or I'm going to complement it by bringing people who are experts in that area into my circle. And your circle can be your mentors, advisors, investors, whoever they are. Right? What an inspirational answer, yeah. ma'am. Rama, over to you. I think you answered most of my uh, questions, Sundari, that were lurking in my mind indirectly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and I have one last question, actually. You mentioned that you are a very boring person, but I find you, find you very interesting. Uh, same wavelength, uh, similar strategies. That's true. Yeah. But, but I'm sure outside of technology and where there's something more that you do that gives you the calm to execute yes. and focus the way you do today. Uh, may I know that secret sauce? Yeah, yeah. So I, have, I definitely have a couple of secrets. I mean, one of them is I'm a very spiritual person. Rama, you know that. Um, yeah, the, it's uh, for all of you to know, it was interesting that Rama and I met uh, because we got introduced by a mutual investor. And when he introduced us, this is Ash, uh, Ash Bharadwaj, when we introduced Rama and me, he said, you know, Sundari, I know you. And then I met Rama and I'm like, oh my God, how can there be two of you? Right. Uh, with that, he kind of made the introduction saying, you know, meet a younger you. And I'm like, okay, all right, fine. Right. And it was just, I mean, we just clicked. We just clicked instantly. We clicked not only in terms of our drive, our energy, but also in some of our spirituality. And, um, you know, both of us are ardent uh, Sai Baba uh, devotees, perhaps. Again, I don't think we are like overly religious, but at a grounded level, we fundamentally believe um, that you need to be a good human being first. Everything else comes afterwards. So I do find calm and peace in uh, my spirit, spiritual endeavors. Um, I, I have a uh, bend for classical music. I, again, I even feel bad admitting it right now, but I have a degree in uh, Hindustani music playing the sitar, right? So I can read, I can listen to music and I can walk for miles and miles. I love hiking and uh, walking around. And that's what I do to kind of uh, get my peace and my joy. Right. Thank you so I much, Sundari. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Actually, I did not know about the, the degree in uh, Hindustani classical. 
Uh, on the same note, I also have a degree in Hindustani classical, but uh, oh my god, vocal, vocal, not <laughs> sitar. <laughs> there's, there's so much, so much in common, and I feel what Ash felt when I met Sundari Ma'am and Rama. There's so much similarity. Uh, uh, there you go. Great personality, <laughs> and yeah. that's a compliment to me. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, actually, I mean, I was taking all the goodness for my own self. Thank you so much. You made my day already. <laughs> Uh, thank so. you sundari this is really really inspiring lot of insights honest answers very much grounded uh, loved having this conversation it's so mutual thank you so much for having me here and uh, you know i absolutely look forward to this touching the lives of even if it touches the life of just one or two people also it's it's so worth it so thank you for making me a part of this beautiful endeavor thank you so Thanks. much ma'am i'll just conclude with uh saying what an inspiring talk this was thank you so much sundari ma'am for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to us and for all of you thank you for tuning into us and watching our episodes watch this space for more